Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do all of the FabFitFun spoiler number four research. So we are skipping spoiler number three, but don't worry, we're gonna come back to it. The only reason we're skipping number three instead of going in order is that there's a lot of skincare in number four and I feel like most of the people that watch my videos prefer when I talk about skincare. Even when I do the sales, you guys always vote to have skincare first. So I thought I might as well do this one, especially because I knew it was gonna be kind of time intensive to get all of the information. Let's start with the Sorbus organizer and it's a makeup organizer, but they did say in their video that you could also use it as a desk organizer if you're maybe not into makeup. It has nine slots and it has a daisy print on the bottom. So at least the daisy print is kind of spring-like. This thing is pretty small though, actually, and it doesn't have exact measurements on the Sorbus website, but they have other ones that look like pretty comparable. Yeah, they have a little bit of a mirror and they're called mini mirror organizers. I'm gonna show you a picture of both side by side right now so you can see why I think that they're pretty comparable, but definitely to me it looks like they're fitting about the same amount of items and the exact same type of items. In the photo that FabFitFun has, they have one of the Youth to the People eye creams and here's that eye cream in someone's hand. It's pretty small and it looks like maybe three of those across and two of them back. So I'm gonna use the same measurements that are on the mini with mirror because to me, it looks like it's the exact same thing except without the mirror and with a daisy print on the bottom. So that is 7.5 across like this and then 3.62 and then the height is 2.62, so that tall. So the 3.62 is actually like, you know, length and width, seven and a half by 3.62. And then FabFitFun gives it a retail value of $30 in the community, but then if you go to Sorbus website, they gave it a $32 retail value. But then if you look at the other minis, the ones that come with the mirror, those are $18.99. So I don't know what's happening here. I don't think those daisies are worth another $11, but that's what the website says. And Sorbus does get really good ratings on different sites and that's pretty much all the information I really have. Let's talk about Grown Alchemist next. This one is a body cream, and I did talk about this a tiny bit in my is it gonna be a spoiler video that I posted a few days before we had our actual spoilers. I think the day before actually, not a few days. This is their body cream, and it is going to be their Mandarin Rosemary scent. Grown Alchemist is a cruelty-free brand. It's made in Australia. The retail value, they say, is $26, and you get 4.23 ounces, and it comes in, like, I don't know what to call it, like a metal medicine type of, like, if you have an ointment, that's basically what it's like. So I really like those because you can push on the back and make sure you get like as much product as possible by rolling up the back. So what I've been doing with ingredients is giving you the top four ingredients. That's kind of like the base. And this one has some really good ones, but I'm gonna actually give you the top five because ingredient four and five actually together, they make another ingredient. So we're gonna start with the first one. The first one is aloe leaf extract. And that is my favorite base. Like hands down, if something starts with aloe leaf extract, I'm absolutely in love with it. The second one is water. The third ingredient is sweet almond oil. That's just a common carrier oil. And then the fourth and fifth ingredient work together. So the first one's called Ceterol Olivate, and it is basically like the wax of Ceterol alcohol mixed with like the fatty acids from olive oil. And then the fifth ingredient is called Sorbitan Olivate. And so that's kind of the same thing except it's sugar alcohol and then the fatty acids from olive oil. But together, they make this product called Olivum 1000. It sounds super fancy. It kind of is fancy in a way. So Olivum 1000, when those two ingredients are put together, it has a lipid structure that mimics the same lipid structure, and, and I know that I can't pronounce things right, of our outer layer of our skin. So it's one, extremely moisturizing, and then softening for your skin. 
but also the reason I always look for it is because it helps your body or your skin absorb caffeine better. And I love to have caffeine in my skincare, but it's not just caffeine. It helps deliver other ingredients into your skin. So it also has shea butter. Shea butter and that sweet almond oil are also going to be extremely moisturizing and it has a bunch of extracts. It has sweet orange, carrot, rosemary, mandarin, grape, rose hip, and wheat germ. So this is also not a gluten-free product. For its ratings, it gets a 4.5 star with 90 reviewers. And the positives say that it's thick formula, but that it absorbs really well. You wanna know why it absorbs really well? All of them, 1,000, that's why. And then the negatives say they didn't like the scent. They said it's a medicinal scent, and some people, a couple, said that it smelled like plastic to them. So. I would expect mandarin and rosemary to smell amazing. I do not own this product. I own a lot of Grown Alchemist and some of it does smell like medicine-y, but it's more like not medicine. It's more to me like if you take a daily vitamin, so like minerally, if that's, that's not a word. I made that word up, but it's a scent, the mineral scent. I feel like a lot of Grown Alchemist smells like that and maybe that's what they mean by medicinal. If you have this product, please let us know down in the comments below. So up next, more skincare, we have the Erna Laszlo Sea Mud Deep Cleansing Bar. And I do believe we've had this in the past, so I think this is a throwback item. They didn't say it was a throwback, at least I didn't see it, but I'm pretty sure that we've had this in the past, somewhere. I don't know why, I just remember talking about it and I just feel like this was maybe last spring. Erna Laszlo is not a cruelty-free brand and this retails for $35 and you get a 100 gram size bar. Um, that is 3.4 ounces. I'm gonna talk again about the size because a lot of the negative reviews were about the size. So the first ingredient in its base is sodium palmate. It is the sodium salt of palm oil, like derived from palm oil. And then the second ingredient is sodium palm kernelate. Probably butchering that, but you know, all that matters is that you know what it is. It's the sodium salt of palm kernel oil. So it does use palm oil. This is not a palm oil free product. Palm oil is in a lot of things. This one is RSPO certified. I did have somebody comment on the last video when I was talking about RSPO certification and having the palm oil like meet the specifications of being sustainably sourced that said, you know, it's not truly sustainably sourced. This is gonna be something that is gonna be a conscious decision for everyone. I can't tell you how to feel about that and I am in no way trying to tell you that the way that I purchase my skincare is the way you should. I'm just trying to give you the information because some people look for sustainable palm oil, some people look for no palm oil, so I do tell you if it's in there or not, and then some people don't care. So there are definitely um, different pools and uh, everybody is welcome here. I hope you care about the environment because I do, but I am not trying to push that on anyone. I'm just trying to give you the info. So if you don't want to buy it, anything that's RSPO certified, that's totally fine too. Then our third ingredient is water, and then the fourth ingredient is the Dead Sea Mud. So kind of like what the product is named after. Both Dead Sea Mud and Dead Sea Water are known for having like a lot of nutrients and minerals naturally, and supposedly that are really good for our skin. They say 26 minerals on their website. Some other ingredients to highlight, it has charcoal. Charcoal helps take like all the oil and toxins, it like absorbs all of that. So this is actually a bar that is recommended if you have acne prone skin or oily skin, but they say that it has moisturizing ingredients in it as well. And that ingredient is glycerin, which is actually a moisturizing ingredient and it's not too far down the list either. The one thing that I did find though is it has fragrance pretty high up. Actually, let me just check really quick. So fragrance is listed as number six out of 15. So almost a third, almost top third of the ingredients list. So if you are not into putting anything with fragrance on your face, this one's probably gonna have one that is pretty strong in a high amount, but it does get a 4.5 star rating with a 195 reviewers. Positives were saying that it really worked for acne. Like a lot of people said they had suffered with acne and this was the cleansing bar that just happened to work for them. There aren't that many negatives, but the ones that I did find were almost always about the size. And there was a good handful that had purchased this bar in the past and apparently it used to be bigger for the same $35. So now it's a 100 gram bar. I looked it up, that's like pretty standard for a facial bar. Like maybe not for the soap that goes in 
like your like a regular bar of soap but i guess maybe if you had previously received one that was much bigger and now you're getting this one and you're paying the same price I would also be dissatisfied. So now let's move on to the Ahava Refreshing Cleansing Gel or Gel Cleanser. No, Refreshing Facial Cleansing Gel. This is also not a cruelty-free band. Ahava used to be cruelty-free, I think sometime last year. They stopped being cruelty-free because they started selling in China and they did remove the cruelty-free bunny off of some of their packaging. However, some of the ones that I was still getting from FabFitFun still had it on there. So just because it's on there doesn't mean that the brand is cruelty free. Now that I have a subscription box and it, when you contact a company, sometimes they they are like, oh, we have old packaging. We can definitely get you at a discounted price. It's the exact same ingredients. So now I know why we see all the like Kat Von D in BoxyCharm and like these old Ahava packagings for FabFitFun. The retail value is $24. For this, you get three ounces. So it has water as its first ingredient and then ammonium lauryl sulfate, which is basically like the, I guess, better version of sodium lauryl sulfate. It's supposedly less irritating or less harsh to have the ammonium lauryl sulfate instead of the other one, but they are still it's still palm oil. The next two ingredients have like impossible names. Zinc cusset sulfate. I am butchering them. I'm not gonna be able to say them, but that is an emulsifier. And this next one I have to look at. That's how complicated it is. Cocamidopropyl betaine. Maybe. All you need to know is that's a surfactant, that this is soapless. So soap is actually oil, water, and lye, and that this product, even though it's a cleanser, is a soapless cleanser, according to Ahava and so it uses these surfactants instead. And then the fifth ingredient is dead sea water. Ahava is actually really known for dead sea water. Like that's the whole point of Ahava, I'm pretty sure, is that it's all dead sea mud and dead sea water because this product is always made in Israel. When we talked about the Erno Laszlo bar, we already talked about there being like a ton of minerals that are good for skin in dead sea water and dead sea mud. So some other cool ingredients they have, they have ginseng, ginger, and ginkgo biloba. They also have fragrance pretty high up and I'm gonna just check to be 100% sure so it is number seven out of 17 so less than top half still this product is vegan and paraben free but like i said it's not cruelty free overall it gets a 4.6 star rating with 120 reviewers and then the positives are that it's good for acne that it's gentle and that's exactly what the soapless part of it really is. And some of the positives also said that it does work to remove mascara and makeup and all of that. So even though it is gentle, it's still getting everything off. So there really weren't that many negatives because the people that were complaining were really just complaining that the packaging changed. It's another thing like with the Erno Lasso, like when you change the size of your bar, if somebody's used to something, they're gonna complain if it changes. So now let's talk about the last skincare. There's two more items, but there's one more in skincare. Those are the ones that take me, like are the most wordy, so they make my video so long. This is the Elemis Papaya Enzyme Peel. And this is a product that's a throwback. So some FabFitFun members already have experience with this peel. This is a $45 retail value and a 50 milliliter bottle and this product is cruelty free. Elemis is a cruelty free brand and it's usually made in the UK. So let's talk about that four ingredient base. The first one is water and then the second one is propylene glycol and if you missed video one I talked about propylene glycol and how it was the like allergen of the year or irritant of the year in 2018. I don't think that they would give something allergen of the year just because they're like what should we pick? Let's just pick a random one and like ruin the life of that ingredient. No. So it is actually an irritating ingredient. The third ingredient is octododecanol, and this is basically a synthetic um, emollient, so it just makes it feel good. Like it's what makes the product have a good feel to it. Then the fourth ingredient is glycerol sterate SE. So glycerol is basically like it's a glycerin product. SE is the end of that it means self emulsifying so it means that it can it's an oil but it can mix with water and it does it by itself like it's like magic because normally you need something to make that work but this ingredient does it on its own so some of the other cool ingredients as papain which is the enzyme for papaya and that is how you're getting this it's not actually a like a peel peel with acid, you're using enzymes from fruits. So papain is from papaya, and then it has a pineapple, and they put pineapple fruit extract, but the name of that enzyme is called bromelain, and both of them basically like 
eat your skin. It's kind of weird, but it's fruit enzymes that like eat the dead skin off your face. And that's how the peeling process works for this particular product. It does have milk protein, so it's not a vegan product as well. For the reviews, it has a 4.6 star rating and I did not write how many reviewers it has. I don't know why I didn't write that. I guess I could look it up, but it has a 4.6 star and it was enough people that I would write it down. We're just trying to save time here so I can make sure I get you guys those other videos. So I'm not gonna give you the total number of reviewers, unfortunately. I just don't feel like looking it up again. Positives say that this one was moisturizing, they had a nice papaya scent and that it either had like a rich or a creamy feel. And then the negatives were mostly that it wasn't strong enough. So I guess when you use the word peel, some people want some serious peeling results, but this is, a, it's using fruit enzymes. So it's a little bit less harsh. And we have one more, and this is like not even a half sheet. So that's how much information I could find on it, but it is from Lark and Ives and it's a hair scarf set. So you get two hair scarves and they're poly satin, like they're made from poly satin. That's like the material. So it's a perfect square. That means length and width are gonna be exactly the same. It's 20 inches length and 20 inches width. So this is the distance right here from finger to finger. And then like obviously this way as well, but you know what I'm saying. You get both colors and one of them was called Coral Sunset, but it doesn't look coral to me at all. It looks pink in the video. I don't know, maybe it is coral. And then the other one is buttercream and that one, it, the name actually does sound like what it looks like on screen as well. It also comes with a little pouch to like hold it in and it's a cute linen pouch, very cute. I don't know though, I don't know what I'm gonna get in this. Let me know in the comments what you guys are going to get or if you have any questions or comments or if you want to call me out for saying something wrong because last time in video one, I said pH of 10, so it's like too acidic so it doesn't work and I meant to say alkaline. I literally, I'm gonna show you in my notes, I wrote the word alkaline, but for some reason, because I thought that I had things memorized, I did not say that word. Oh, you're not even gonna see it. Oh, it's going, it's going right here, alkaline. Why did I not say alkaline? I don't know, because I'm just dumb and I think I know things that I do not know. But Rebecca in the Fab That Fun community, I don't remember the numbers after her name, but Rebecca, shout out to you for calling me out. Always call me out. In a nice way, call me out. So I always want to know, I do not want to be giving any wrong information. So when I was editing, I didn't even think twice about it. Like I didn't even think to look and just like, yeah, yeah, okay, like edit, put my photos, get them to you guys as soon as possible. But because she called me out, I was able to put a comment and change my description and say like, hey guys, I meant alkaline. I did not mean acidic. You know, they don't even sound that alike, but whatever. So thank you for that. Of course, po politely call someone out. Don't tell someone that they look fat on camera or that their makeup sucks or anything like that. Like I also get some of that. I just delete those comments. But if I'm saying something that's wrong and I'm sharing it to like a thousand people, I don't, want, I don't want it to be wrong, okay? I wanna be able to correct myself. So if it's something like that, if you fact check me, then please put the fact down there so then I can pin your comment or I can like at least put a note to my video or tear it down, I guess, if it was like that bad of a fact check. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.